Hello, hello, welcome back to another video. So today we're taking a look at Shopify. And recently Shopify seems to be like a trending stock due to its stock price dropping by more than 10%. And personally, just taking a look at the numbers, I think that it is definitely way overvalued still. So let's do a stock analysis and I will explain to you guys why I think that it is overvalued. And of course, at the end of the video, I will give you guys my fair value range for Shopify as well. Okay, so as we can see right now, Shopify is trading at $62.45 multiply that by its total outstanding shares we will get a market cap of 80 billion its balance sheet is quite good because it has an enterprise value of 76 billion meaning to say they have more cash than debt and now let's take a look at their revenue we can see that since 2014 it has grown like crazy about 70 xing its revenues in 2014 it was just at 100 million and right now it is at 7 billion dollars so definitely shopify is a monster growth company however just by looking at its current revenue to its enterprise value let's take 76 billion in enterprise value divided by 7.4 b in revenue we can see that we are paying a price of 10x its revenue which is is definitely overvalued for me i think anything above a four would usually mean that the company is overvalued however of course if the company is able to increase revenues very very quickly then it can justify a price to revenue ratio of more than four and a price to revenue ratio of 10 would mean that shopify would really have to increase its revenues extremely quickly and even then, it is expected because if they do not, then you're definitely overpaying for a stock. So anyways, moving on, we can see gross profit has also done pretty well, going from 61 million in 2014 to right now 3.7 billion in the trailing 12 months. Operating income, however, is not the best, with most of its years being a net loss. However, recently they have generated around 550 million of operating income in the trailing 12 months net income however is still negative at negative 200 million and we will have to take a look at cash flows later because net income is not really the most accurate number and i'll explain to you guys in a bit as well for example them making 2.9 billion dollars in net income here is not accurate and to be honest if they are actually making a net income value of 2.9 billion then shopify would actually seem to be fairly valued or even undervalued due to how fast they are increasing their revenues and possibly profits as well however i took a look at their annual report in 2021 if you just come here to their investor relations page you can find their annual report and we have to take a look or search for this term net unrealized gain to find out exactly how much of their net income is actually a one-off thing and we can see that for the year 2021 they had about a 2.8 billion dollars of net unrealized gains and if you want to take a look you can actually uh, read this paragraph over here it basically states that they have around 970 million dollars in unrealized gains from their investment into this company called global e and they had other investments as well in private companies etc etc which added up to around 2.2 billion dollars and the numbers don't need to be exact but we will know that basically 2021's net income is a one-off thing and they are not making 2.9 billion dollars uh, in net income per year I mean it's written here but like when I say they're not making 2.9b in net income I mean that the company itself is not organically generating 2.9 billion dollars in earnings because no shit their gross profit is only at 2.5b and after deducting their operating expenses their gross profit is only at 400 million dollars so in no way is it possible for them to consistently generate this 2.9 billion but we should not use this 2.9 b to value the company okay and moving on we can see that they have actually diluted shares by quite a bit from less than 400 million shares in 2014 to right now more than 1.2 billion 
shares in the trailing 12 months so slightly more than 3xing their total outstanding shares which would also go to show that instead of 70xing their revenue they are more like 20xing plus their revenue and we can just take their revenue per share of $5.77 5.77 divided by 0 0.27 and we get 21x so they didn't 70x their revenue as an investor they actually only 21x their revenue as an investor uh, but 21x is still a crazy crazy good amount however we will see in a bit and i will explain why i still think that today's price is not worth however fast uh, shopify is growing and we can see that based on earnings per share they are pretty much still negative even in the trailing 12 months at negative 16 cents per share and so now let's take a look at shopify's balance sheet they have 5.1 b in cash and short-term investments 1 b in total receivables 6.4 b in current assets and a total asset value of 11 b their balance sheet is not the most important due to them being more like a tech company it is more of how much they can generate as a business itself total liabilities of 2.2 b and we can see that they have a solid balance sheet of negative 4 billion in net debt which like i said at the start meaning that they have more assets than they have debt and they will be able to pay off all their debts in a single day with four billion dollars to spare and now let's take a look at their cash flow net income negative 200 million and the main thing we want to look at is its levered free cash flow which is right now at 800 million so we will likely use this to calculate its enterprise value later or market cap later and we can also see that shopify basically pays no debt or no interest because it's unlevered free cash flow and levered free cash flow is basically the same since 2022 and to be honest i would rather them uh, have a solid balance sheet like shopify's and increasing share count than having let's say less shares by a massive debt finally let's take a look at their growth metrics before i will give you guys my fair value estimation and we can see that revenues have grown at a compounded rate of 60 plus percent for the last 10 years which is absolutely monster for me i think anything above a 10 percent rate is the sign of a solid company and anything above 20 percent i would consider a very fast grower and 60 percent obviously is monster i think even tesla is only at like 30 or 40 plus percent but we can see that in the past three years it is only at 29 percent meaning to say that of course uh, growth has slowed down and year over year is only at 25 percent meaning to say it has slowed down even more although yes 25 percent is still extremely fast so for me personally a stagnant company or a company that does not grow and also does not decline deserves a multiple of seven times because if we take one divided by seven we can see that they are compounding at a rate of 14 percent per year and this is because if we want to beat the market which generates an average of around 10 percent per year for me it would seem like it would make sense for the company to be compounding at a rate faster than 10 percent and so if the company is stagnant and i'm never going to get an increase in earnings from the company then i would want something better than 10 percent and 14 percent seems to be pretty decent because when you're purchasing a company that is not growing you are also definitely taking a risk that its business will decline and so i would not take anything lower than 14 percent as well for a stagnant company meaning to say that the pe ratio has to be seven or under and of course this is just a preference there is no 100 percent guide that a stagnant company should be worth x amount of multiple and whatnot and i have also gotten this number of seven from warren buffett's mentor benjamin graham if you read the book the intelligent investor or security analysis um, that's what he says that a stagnant company should be valued at a multiple of seven and it's not that i agree but i think that it is a number that somewhat makes sense but anyways let's move on if a company grows their earnings and revenue at let's say 10 percent per year compounded then definitely we would have to assign a higher multiple than seven and for me 
if they are compounding at a CAGR of 10%, then for me, it would make sense that I give them a multiple of around 14. Why 14? Again, let's take 1 divided by 14. We can see that in the initial years, our company is only going to compound at an internal rate of 7%, meaning to say that if the company suddenly stops growing, I will only be making 7% of my money per year. This is of course from the perspective of if you're owning the whole company outright, which we should definitely take this perspective in my opinion again. But we can see that every single year, due to them compounding at 10%, our earnings or our internal rate of compounding would also increase by 10% per year, assuming that the business continues to grow. So let's just make the numbers easier. So 7%. And if we say uh, in one year's time, that's times 1.1, which is an increase of 10%, we can see that they are now compounding at 7.8%. And again, on year two, after purchasing the company, it is now at 8%, so on and so forth. Now it's 9% on the third year, and on the fourth year, it is uh, 10%. Fifth, six, seven, eight. And we see that finally on year number 8, the company finally generates or compounds internally more than a company with a PE of 7. But basically, we had to wait 8 years for it to finally pay off because only on year 8 does it compound at more than 14% meaning to say that from years 1 to 7 I would be actually better off investing in a stagnant company with a multiple of 7 than a company that grows at 10% at a multiple of 14 because not only are you doing better only on year 8 you are also taking on the risk that if the company does not grow at a CAGR of 10% or more that the company will not even reach compounding internally at more than 14% on year 8 and it could be delayed even further. And so why people actually purchase companies at a PE multiple of 30 or 40 is beyond me. But finally, let's also take a look at how fast its levered free cash flow is compounding at before I give you guys the multiple. So to be honest, its free cash flow per share is obviously compounding at a crazy rate. However, that's because it used to be negative or it used to be pretty, pretty damn low. So honestly, I think it's pretty hard to say uh, how fast its free cash flow is going to grow in the coming few years. But I'm just going to say that Shopify might be a company that will be able to compound its free cash flow at probably 15 to even 20%. And let me just give Shopify an earnings multiple of 15 to 18. Where did I get this number? It is just out of my head. It is an estimation and it is by no means a pinpoint accurate fair value range. But as an investor, you have to give the company your own range. And I tend to be on the more conservative side. So even my fair value range could be considered undervalued by other investors but let's go with it and see what we get so i'm going to take 800 million as their free cash flow number so 0 0.8 billion times 15 we will get 12 billion and 0 0.8 times 18 we will get 14.4 billion and because its net debt is a negative 4b I would also add it on to its valuation. So 14.4 plus 4 is 18.4. And for me, my fair value estimation for Shopify as of right now would be 12 to 18 billion dollars. It would mean that Shopify is around 80% overvalued. So if we calculate it based on a per share value, let's take 62.45 times 0 0.2. It would mean that my fair value range for Shopify is around $12.50. And so honestly, it might seem like I am just lowballing the business like crazy. I am really not. I am just valuing it based on the business. I do not care about what its current share price actually is. I value the business and then I look at the share price. And to me, Shopify is a business that is worth 12 to 18 billion dollars. And at the maximum, 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 I will probably give it a 4x its revenues valuation, 
which would mean roughly around $30 billion, which would also mean that Shopify is still more than 50% overvalued. And so for me right now, if I own Shopify shares, I would definitely sell it. I do think that Shopify is here to stay and it will continue to grow at a pretty fast pace. However, I think that with today's price of a market cap around $80 billion, it is way overvalued. And as an investor, I do not think that Shopify is worth its current price right now. And with that said, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Do help to like the video and subscribe because it keeps me motivated to continue to want to post more content like this. So thanks for your support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.